Can you all see this? Yes, sir, we can. All right. Well, um, Samantha's uncle, who only wore bright orange flip-flops and green plaid pajamas all day, every day, well, he disappeared. But before he did, he taught his nieces and his nephew how to say please, thank you, and where's the tallest building in the city in 11 different languages. And they set off to look for him, and they discover that no place is in the middle of nowhere. When I was about your age, my parents took me to see a play and a big fancy theater, and I started getting a little bored. I started looking around at the walls and the, the ceiling in this, in this theater, and I saw all these shapes, and I thought, wow, wouldn't it be neat if one of these you know, panels or, or little, little cutout shapes was actually a secret door, and maybe you could... Uh, um, maybe you could um, open one up and it would, uh, you'd find a ladder behind it and you'd go up some secret ladder hatch and then a stairway and find a, a secret room that nobody else knew about. And so I had that idea when I was a kid and, and whenever I'd go places, I'd always try to imagine, what if there was a secret door over there? Or what if there's a, a hidden button over there? And so I saw uh, the statue of a lion in front of a library in New York. It's a famous statue. And I thought, wow, what if somebody could, could pull the tail? And then if you pulled the tail, it would unlock a, a secret door and you could go down to a place that nobody else knew about. And then I, I'd see um, knobs and buttons on the sides of buildings. And I'd think, wow, what if some of them were actually secret buttons that controlled a monorail underground? And then there was this building, a bank in a city I saw, and it had shields running along the top of the building with the names of, of cities around the world. And I thought, wow, what if you could open up those panels, those shields, and behind each one there was a crazy straw that would whoosh, zip you off to Germany or France thousands of miles an hour. And then I thought about, um, have any of you guys heard of the Hope Diamond? Maybe some of you, the Hope Diamond in Washington, D.C. Well, in a museum in, in Washington, D.C., there's this giant, valuable diamond, the Hope Diamond. And I thought, what if it wasn't really a diamond? And it was a fake diamond, and all the security guards are marching around protecting something that's worth only about 75 cents. And the real diamond is out there. And maybe somebody put it on a doggy collar and didn't tell anybody else about it. And uh, so I, I thought about all those things. And then I had one more idea. I thought to myself, have you ever seen a grown up walking around in the middle of the day wearing pajamas? You know, maybe you're outside. And I'm not talking about this month where a lot of people are wearing pajamas all day long. I mean, outside in a park or maybe at a coffee shop or at the library and you see a grown man or a grown woman and they're wearing plaid pajamas or flip-flops and I thought well, what if whenever you see a, an adult and they're wearing pajamas 
outside in the middle of the day, that means they're the member of some kind of a secret society or some organization that not a lot of people know about. Anyways, I took all those ideas and I put them in my books. Um, Samantha Spinner and the Super Secret Plans, Samantha Spinner and the Spectacular Specs, and then just recently, Samantha Spinner and the Boy in the Ball. And that tells a story that starts in Seattle, Washington. Um, and I chose Seattle, Washington because at the time I started writing these stories, that's where I lived. I was living in Seattle. Maybe some of you have heard of the Space Needle, it's a fancy building uh, tower in downtown Seattle. Well, anyways, in my story, Samantha's uncle, who only wore green plaid pajamas and bright orange flip-flops all day, every day, well, he disappears, but he leaves presents behind for his nieces and his nephew. So Samantha's older sister, she gets a check for $2.4 billion. And that comes up, that comes along with a note that says, have fun shopping. And Samantha's super annoying little brother, well, he gets the deed to Yankee Stadium and all the baseball players' contracts. So he's the new owner of the New York Yankees. And that comes with a note that says, don't miss opening day. And Samantha, for her present, she gets a rusty old umbrella with a hole in it. And uh, uh, that comes with a note that says, watch out for the rain. So if you read my story, and I hope some of you do, you will discover that the title of chapter two is it wasn't fair. And things seem really unfair for many pages. And there's some power moping and, and complaining that goes on. And then at some point, Samantha and her super annoying brother look at the inside of the umbrella with a magnifying glass. And they discover that it's full of drawings and maps and diagrams and instructions. And the inside of this umbrella is actually the super secret plans to the whole world. But you remember that note that said, watch out for the rain? Well, of course, that stands for the Royal Academy of International Ninjas. And they used to have the super secret plans and they would break into museums and banks and art galleries. And now they still do all those crimes, but without the plans, they have to use the sewers. And so they've become stink bandits. They smell terrible. They're the world's worst ninjas because they can't sneak up on anybody. And they're really unhappy about that. And they want the umbrella back now. So my story is filled with real places and really cool things about uh, countries and cities and art and architecture that really is out there in the world and of course filled with all sorts of crazy characters that i've made up and and zany adventures and um there's a question that readers ask me a lot they say mr gins have you ever been to italy have you ever been to paris france and i say not yet and they say well have you ever been to mali or St. Louis, Missouri, or Egypt, or India. And I say, well, not yet. So how do you guys think I write about all these places even though I've never been there? Does anybody have a, an idea? If you- uh, the Internet. I'm, oh. Yeah, okay, well, that's, that's good. I, do research on the internet a lot. I, I do research. I use books, I use maps, and I use the internet a lot. And one of the things I do when I want to write about a place that I've never, you know, learned about before, um, and, and I don't know if I made this up or if lots of authors do this, but I use Google Earth. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys know about Google Earth. So when I want to write about a place, I first I find the country, and then I zoom in on the city, and then I zoom in on the exact neighborhood that I'm writing about, and then I change it to street view. And so now, even though I'm making up characters and writing about you know, smelly ninjas and creepy clowns or librarians and teachers or robots 
or outer space aliens, I can describe what it would really look like if it was really happening and they were running down the streets and you'd see these doors going by or you could describe the windows on the building they were standing under. Um, so uh, I have a little, if, if, if there's time, yes. I wanted to read to you just a little bit from uh, the first book in the series. And this part of the story, Samantha and her super annoying brother, uh, they, they're in Florence, Italy, and they have figured out that they need to find a statue in the city of Florence. And if they can find the right statue, there's a button hidden inside one of the horse's nose. <clears throat> Samantha took a closer look at the horses. They seemed to be splashing and straining. Their mouths were open as if gasping for air. She looked even closer at the marble faces and noticed something odd. She saw a blue dot in one horse's nostril. There's something up with that horse, she told her brother. Follow me. And water bubbled all around them. And they came face to face with four bright white marble stallions. Samantha pointed to the horse second from the right. And Nipper squinted at the statues. Then he stood up straight. Step aside, he shouted, pushing his sister out of the way. He raised a hand high in the air and he wiggled his index finger. This is a noseworthy situation, he declared, and I have been called upon to use my special talent. Samantha groaned. You are exceptionally gross. Nipper plunged his finger deep inside the horse's dark nostril and pressed. Something gave a little and there was a click followed by four loud creaking noises. Somewhere below the street, it sounded like four giant toilets flushing. They looked down. The water around the horses began to churn. It looked as if the marble herd was stampeding. A dark shape appeared in the swirling water near the horse's feet. Samantha started to lose her footing. The fountain had become an angry storm. Wait, she shouted. I just remembered something that we... The current yanked Samantha under the surface. Her sentence ended in a long gurgling. We... She was being sucked towards the dark shape in front of the horses. She flailed her arms, slapping at the water helplessly, and slid into the darkness. So, I'm having a lot of fun writing stories about, you know, ninjas and clowns and real places around the world. But another thing that I'm doing is that I've loaded my books with secret messages and hidden puzzles and clues. And uh, so if you take uh, the titles of a bunch of chapters and you put them together, they make a word search. And if you can solve that word search, that'll give you clues about other things that are gonna happen in the story. And there's one character, she's really not nice. And whenever she talks, has words, there's numbers along the bottom of the page. And you can use those numbers to find a secret website. And if you go to that website, it'll say, never read Samantha Spinner. It's the worst story ever written. But uh, so there's all sorts of hidden facts and hidden clues and hidden information about what's going to happen later in the story. And um, to give you guys an idea of how I am hiding messages in my books, I put together a couple extra puzzles for you. So um, let's see if, if this works online. Samantha's umbrella hit a lying, smelly ninja. If you take a closer look, you can find the name of a hidden country. Okay, so if you want to try to guess the name, don't call it out. If you want to try to guess the name of the hidden country in this clue, you can hit the reaction button with the hands up, like a little hand or clapping, and Miss Hallie and I will kind of go through and see which one of you guys wants to try to figure it out. I'm scrolling through. So in Samantha's umbrella, let's see, we have which country? Alyssa, do you want to try to unmute and tell us or Kara? All right, go ahead. Um, I think the hidden 
country is Italy. <gasps> Very exactly good. Right. Yes. That's exactly right. So let's, uh, let's do another one. Very good, Alyssa. Okay, you can mute yourself. I brought my lunch in a paper bag today. If you take a closer look, there's the name of a country hidden there. Samantha A. Um, China. Very good. You got wow, it. Okay, that everybody, was fast. Do one more. Don't just shout it out. Dennis, that's their dog with the Hope Diamond around his neck. Dennis saw a man in a cape running in the street. But if you take a closer look, there's the name of a country here somewhere. All right, let's see. Hmm, Sydney, Giles. It's Giles. Oh, it's Giles, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sydney Maybe, Giles. Uh, um, it's... It's a country. Uh, I also found Ninja right here. Next to the N I A. Oh, it's almost a ninja, but no. Is there the name of a country? The mm. name of the uh, Dennis saw uh, a man. If not, I would. I'll try field. somebody else, Sydney. Who else? Who else wants How to try? How about Arabella? You can't do reaction. Yes. Peru. Very okay, good. Okay, so th that's one way I'm hiding little messages in my books. Here's another one. Iceland, Norway, Denmark, Italy, Albania. Those are five countries. What's the name of the secret sixth country that's hidden there? Hmm. Anybody? Iceland, Norway, Denmark, Italy, Albania, and... Yes. Alex. India. That's good. How'd you get it? Um, all of the first letters of all the countries about India. Very good. That's right. So those are all ways I'm hiding secret messages and things in my stories. And there's something I'm not hiding. And that's no place is in the middle of nowhere. That comes up a lot in my books. People say it. And what that means is don't let anybody tell you that there are strange far away places with strange people because they're not far away to the people who live there. You're far away from them in the same way. And maybe they wouldn't be strange if you met them or knew, learned about them or knew somebody from that place. And so um, my books are really silly. They're silly adventures. They go all around the world with creepy clowns and uh, smelly ninjas and librarians and teachers and pirates. But but it, the, if there is one point to it, is that there's a lot of really cool, interesting things all around the world, and you shouldn't be afraid of anybody just because they don't look just like you. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, my presentation for Samantha Spinner and the, uh, the Samantha Spinner series. I would love to answer any questions about writing and uh, uh, my book series, if anybody had any. So we had some questions, and I will take some more questions, but I know we had some questions from my book club. They were wondering, Mr. Gins, why the obsession with waffles? You know, <laughs> it's because everybody likes waffles, and it's fun, and they're great. You can do lots of stuff with waffles. You know, Not Lucy. Have, they have Lucy's squares. Lucy's saying thumbs down. You have squares <laughs> on waffles, so you can put puzzles in waffles. They're mm. funnier than pancakes, I think. Uh, yes, don't you think? I they're, agree. they're just great to say. Sometimes I when I go to, to schools and I have assemblies and I have lots and lots of kids, I make everybody shout, Don't be awful, have a waffle, because it sounds funny. And uh, so I, I think. The obsession with the waffle is I could I knew it was something I could use over and over again and people would remember it. Mm -hmm. Well, it is really remembered. Um, I thought I read something about you in a waffle, though. 
in your author facts. Oh, so, in my author facts. Well, one of the- <laughs> you still have that? Yes, I do. I'm going to reach for it in a second. Well, one of the fun, most fun things about um, being an author is you get to go and meet readers. And so I get to go to libraries. I get to do this online, you know, with video conferencing. But I also get to visit lots of schools and book festivals. And the very first school, so this was three years ago when the first Samantha Spinner book came out, the very first classroom I went to, they had a waffle party for me. And it was the nicest Ooh. thing that anyone could ever do to celebrate a book that had waffles in it. <laughs> and I was so happy about that. I saved one of the little waffles and I had it put in a, in a little case so I could always keep Samantha Spinner's first waffle. <gasps> and I don't think it would be smart at this point for anybody to eat this waffle. But, uh, but I, uh, I sort of kept it here with a little, little umbrella so I don't no. forget. Yep. So this is my Jane my and first. Braden. I don't know who other kids from my book club are there, but we were wondering about that waffle. And I'm glad that we got to see it, right, Jane? Right, Braden? And we also did something. We built a very high creation. Well, they built high creations with expired marshmallows. And expires, some of them right. and no matter decided what that they happens, wanted to try to eat it anyway. No matter what happens, no matter how late in the night it is or how hungry you are, do not eat those old stale marshmallows. <laughs> I will not eat that waffle. All okay, right. who's got and another have, question? Um, Jane, do you want to share your question out loud? You can unmute. Yeah, um, why did you write the uh, Girl Scout song if you're not a Girl Scout? Oh, we were talking about your Girl Scout song. Oh, did and we you have a lot did, of Girl Scouts, or maybe other Scouts too, um, Scouts of America here today with us. Oh, uh, well, I'm- Wave your uh, hand, wave your hand if you are a Scout of America or a uh, Girl Scout. Look at how many Scouts. And so if you go onto Mr. Gin's website, you oh, can listen yeah. to his jingle. You wanna tell him about that, Mr. Gin's? Yeah, so, um, because as you could tell, I, in addition to writing books, I write songs. Uh, so I wrote a book, a song for my book, but I also get hired as a job to write songs for other people. And a couple of years ago, I got hired by the Girl Scouts because they wanted a song about girls to teach, uh, to teach Scouts about Girl Scout cookies and the names of the cookies and facts about them and about the, the, the goals of, of selling and business. And so if you go to samanthaspinner.com, and learn about the author, I have a link to the Girl Scout cookie song. And I think you well, guys should learn that. it and sing it. That's what I think. Nice. Uh, and um, by the way, the, the woman who sang the Girl Scout cookie song is the same woman I brought back to sing the Samantha Spinner theme song. You'll notice nice. the same singer. Oh, nice. I think we have a question from Cassidy. Cassidy, if you want to unmute and share your question. So how many schools have you traveled to? Whew. I like not, like where in the Okay, well I have actually been to about 200 schools in the last 3 years. Uh <laughs> not so many this year. But um, just, now I'm doing a lot of videos, but I, I I'll go back again. I have been to schools all over the United States. I haven't been outside of the U.S. yet to talk about Samantha, but I've been to Seattle, to, to uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, New York City, lots and lots of schools in Virginia and Maryland because that's where I, I live in, in Fairfax, Virginia. So, uh, uh, in fact, uh, is anybody here from Old Creek? or Westfield. Yes, we have old, a lot of Old Creekers here. We have and Old Creekers? They, okay, so they, last um, year I was there. Yes, and they, uh, so Mr. Gins actually lives in my neighborhood and we are Old Creekers. Yeah, so and you have, have uh, Patty, Patty Smalley? Smalley. Yes, that is our librarian, she's, right, she's Hannah? She's librarian. Ms. Smalley? Uh, yes, and <laughs> I was so excited. One of the best things, I went there, uh, it was actually Dr. Violet. Day when I went, everybody was wearing those big tall hats. But, oh. but, but Miss Smalley, because I was there, 
coming to talk about Samantha. She wore plaid pants that day. And I remember. That oh, was and we have a friend here, Priscilla, who lives about two doors down from you. Oh, really? Did, she, <laughs> right, did she see my, did she get to see my presentation at Old Creek? I don't know because she was younger then, right? You, yeah, you probably share? been too yeah, long. I back. left, I left um, at kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would oh, too. Oh, okay. She yeah. was in kindergarten, yeah. And, and Violet lives pretty close to you as well. Okay. So who so, else has a question? Any other we questions have a question about from, writing and being an author? Or yes, we have a question from Nicolette. Nicolette, do you want to unmute? It was a very good question. If not, I will ask it for you. As she wanted to know, and maybe it's not Nicolette, maybe that's her mom. Um, how, oh, okay, she can't. How do you like to write your books? Um, you know, how do I actually go about writing the books? Well, I, it's funny, about half the time I am here in this room when I'm writing my books. And then about half the time I take uh, my computer and I go someplace just because I, I think it's important, even though I'm sort of doing this by myself to sort of be out in the world and I won't feel as, as alone while I'm doing it. So I go to coffee shops and I sit and write, or I go sit in the library and I write. Uh, uh, but uh, the way I work, I write my stories and then I read them back to each other, uh, read, read them back to myself. So I don't want to be like in a library or some other place and all of a sudden I'm, I'm shouting like one of the bad guys in my story. So about half the time I, uh, I, I work here. And I work on a computer. Um, that's a, a question kids ask a lot. But uh, oh. I'm not too good at paper. I most <laughs> I, I just write on on the computer mostly. You're not one of those uh, authors that carries a notebook around and. Nope. But I do have lots and lots of note cards. I think of something and I I write it on post its. And if you could see the there's a wall over there and it's just covered with post-its. I'll think of a funny idea or I'll meet something or a kid will ask me a question and I'll think, wow, that, that belongs in a story. And then I'll put it on a post-it. Oh. oh, those are really good questions. I ha there's another, well, I wanted to share um, Eleanor's comment because her name is also Eleanor backslash I love Samantha Spinner. Nice. <laughs> That's nice. So I thought that was really nice. I'm trying to find her on my screen, but I can't find her. Um, so Elizabeth, do you want to share your question? Okay, go ahead. Is any of your books dedicated to Girl Scouts? No, I uh, dedicated to people who help me help me uh, write the books or have been uh, helped me learn about the world. I, nothing dedicated here uh, to the Girl Scouts. I think my first book is dedicated to my friend Kelly because she helped me write the books. And then I think this book is... Yeah, yeah, I see Second Actually, one, I kind of, because my mom's named Kelly and she's a Girl Scout troop leader. Yeah, so maybe in, in some roundabout way, this book is selling. And mine. And then my <laughs> second book, I dedicated to they a muted. teacher of mine who I really liked, who really, I really learned a lot from, and so I thought that was important. And then this book, I dedicated to my mom because she helps me actually, whenever I'm working on a book, I, I show it to her and she finds lots of mistakes and helps me correct it and read things. So I, I dedicated a book to her. So, okay, so we have a few more questions. Do you have some time, Mr. Yeah. You bet. All right. Yep. So I'm going to call on some people that have not gone yet. And then if at the end we have time, I'll call on some people that um, have not gone. So I think, Taylor, you have not gone yet. Would you like to ask your question? How long have you been an author? Hmm. Well, I'm pretty old. And I've been doing this a long time. I've actually been writing books for 25 years, lots of different books of different kinds. But Samantha is my first book series. So it's kind of, it's new to me, even though I've done lots of books uh, of different types all along the way. But Samantha's my first uh, that I just started uh, three years ago, my first uh, novel and book series. And, and also, is any of your, 
-hmm. Sorry, go ahead, Taylor. Also, if any, uh, I mean, it also is any of your books dedicated to animals? You know, no, but I sure love dogs. I have dogs running around here somewhere that sit with me while I write sometimes. So I think I would dedicate it to one of my dogs. Eventually, I'll get around to it. I also, <laughs> my favorite animal is a panda bear. Okay, well, Taylor, good. good job. We're going to let somebody else have a chance. And I know that in your Samantha Spinner books, there is a dog who uh, plays an important role at some at some points in the book. Um, somebody wants to know if is is your is it mysterious? Oh yeah, definitely. I think if somebody asked me, you know, what this book is, especially it's it's a mystery, especially mm -hmm. the first one, and then it's more and more of an adventure. But it's but but it is a big mystery. You're finding out little by little secrets. Where's the uncle? What's going on? Where did this umbrella come from? What's going on with the neighbor? Who are those people that the neighbor says? is her parents but couldn't possibly really be her parents and so there's it is a big mystery yes and i like that at the end of that first book mr gins it still kind of is a mystery so it makes you want to read on um i think we had a question from let's see um uh gabby um for the stories and stuff is there like like a like a like no like a show about it a what about it a, a show um well not yet we are talking to people about uh making a video series based on it those things take a long time like usually they start with the book and then a couple years later so so the answer is we're working on it and it could very much happen, but uh, it no, nothing official yet. And it probably would take, it's going to take a long time before that actually uh, uh, comes out. So right now it's just a book. Raise a hand or you can put a um, reaction on and if you have another question. Or you have a question. I thought I saw a few more. Let me look through. Um, you can't do reactions. Oh, some people can. Um, Brooke, or it was Olivia, right? Did you want to have, do you have a question? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. How many books are there? Um, well, right now, the book number four in the series is coming out in about a month. So there's three now, a fourth one comes out. There's going to be a total of six books in the series. <laughs> Is there a private eye? Hmm. Yes, there's a private eye shows up in book three because uh, right early in book one, uh, it, in book one, Samantha and her brother, they sneak up and down the Eiffel Tower and because using the super secret plans but there's a private investigator who thinks that they uh, didn't pay so they got he's chasing them all around the world because they <laughs> ran up and down the the eiffel tower without paying for a ticket uh, yeah and samantha a private eye is what he said a, an investigator kind of like a detective um alex did you have a question um yeah so what is your favorite book that you've written or which one was the funnest to write Hmm. So, um, I'm sorry, could you repeat? Which one is your favorite book that you've written in the series or which one was the funnest to write? Hmm. What is your favorite book? I think his I think, well, I, I do like the first one because it sort of got me started with the whole thing, but I think uh, number th three is the funniest one in the series because it just gets sillier and sillier. There's this, you know, the sort of characters come into the series and then they keep they stay and so <laughs> the sisters i don't want to give away too much but now she she uh her movie doesn't work out so she's going to be a star on broadway and there's this monkey that never stops chasing samantha's super annoying brother and so i think uh this one made me laugh the most while writing it um and then i, I write a lot of other books i think samantha is my favorite book that I've actually written, but I think my favorite book title is, uh, 
is there a chance you've seen my pants? Which was a board book I did a while ago. And I just think that's really funny to tell people that I'm the author of, is there a chance you've seen my pants? Because it's like some kind of weird self-help book or something. I just think that's very funny. Um, who's got a question? Uh, um, I'm gonna go to Priscilla, Jane, and then Hannah. So Priscilla, what's your question? My question is um, how many dogs you have and are they little or big? I have two little dogs. They are mutts and uh, one is named Lila and one is Liam and they're about this big. And they are sleeping somewhere. And so I'm just gonna let that stay the way it is. Are they like white? Yes, okay, you might live in my neighborhood. And, yeah, uh, I see. Um, I see people walking um, little white dogs a lot. Yep, yep. I get up every morning <laughs> and I walk them. And at first, I thought that was kind of annoying, but it actually helped me get my work done because I would get up early and I would be up before anybody else in the house was awake, and that gave me time to write. So, uh, so it actually worked out. Okay, so I think we have. I think I said Jane next, and then Hannah. Um, I noticed that you have a red umbrella with you. Yes. Um, this isn't a real umbrella with secret plans. I just, uh, like when I go and visit schools, I like to carry this one, and I did make a note that says, watch out for the rain. And I've actually, because I visited many schools, I think this, I'm on my third or fourth umbrella. And I used to like poke a hole in it and make it, try to make it all rusty. But when you visit a school, there's one very important rule, which is don't let anybody's eye get poked out. And so I don't go to schools with an old rusty umbrella anymore. I, this is a safe, a safe one. And I go into schools and I open the umbrella and, uh, People say, uh, ooh, you're gonna bring bad luck. And I say, yes, I'm coming into your school and I'm bringing terrible bad luck. And you know what? The only way to break that curse is read a good book. Mm. That sounds good to me. Okay, Hannah and then Eleanor. I think your hand is up, yes? You can nod if your hand is up. Oh, it's not? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna lower your hand then. I see a little hand picture there. Um, okay, go ahead, Hannah. Um, uh, why is Buffy so mean? And also, um, we have two baby doggies. Oh, well, the sister is pretty rotten. And I, I, I think when I first came up with the idea of the sister, her whole purpose was just to get some big present that, and then be out of the story forever. Because so it would make Samantha jealous, but I had no plans for her to actually be in the story. So I just really early on in the first book, she gets rich, starts spending money, and decides she's going to go move to California to become a movie star. And I thought that that would be the end of her. And, uh, you know, I would never bring her back again. But it, it, it became so much fun to have her write to Samantha and pick on her and cause trouble that I just keep bringing her back and back again. And so there's a whole lot of Buffy in book two when we find out about her Broadway play uh, mm. that she's going to write. And then I told uh, my publisher, the people who, make, who print the books, I said, well, there's not going to be any Buffy, Buffy in, uh, in book three because I'd written too much about her. And then the very first thing that happened when I started writing, it's like, mother, and Buffy's <laughs> yelling at her mom about something. And so Buffy stays in the book. She's gonna, she, it turns out that there's really an important extra part of Samantha. So Samantha's gonna find her uncle, hmm. her brother's gonna help the New York Yankees, and Samantha's older sister is gonna find a unicorn to buy. That's oh. really what the story. You could, you could say that this whole book series is about a girl whose younger sister gets an umbrella, but she's going to buy a unicorn. Nice. Um, Angie, do you have a question? Yes. How long does it take for you to write each book? That's a, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Now, the first book, this is a terrible story. This is a scare. This might be too. This might be a horror story. This might be really scary. It took me <laughs> five years. But but wait. But wait. But wait. 
do you or do you know anybody who ever like says i'm gonna do something and then they never get around to finishing it you ever met anybody like that yeah okay well that kind of happened to me i i came up with the idea for this story and then i never finished it and i was always talking about it but i never finished it and then at some point um i looked at a penny a new shiny penny because in my story um Samantha looks at the back of a penny and there was a clue. There's the Lincoln Memorial and she finds a clue in that penny. Um, but then after I had been talking about writing for so long, I looked at a shiny penny and it was a new penny. They changed it. It had a shield on it. They changed the penny. And I thought, oh no, if I don't finish writing this book soon, it's not gonna make any sense to anybody. And so at that point, I got really serious and write every day and I finished my book. It took about three months to write a book. And that, but what's really important there is three months to write the first draft. I don't know if anybody ever tells you that writing is rewriting, you ever hear that? Because I wrote the first draft, then I showed it to friends and I showed it to the editors at the, the book publisher. I showed it to my mom and we made lots of, some things stayed the same, other things changed two or three or four times. Uh, and then uh, about si after about six months of working on it, they hired the illustrator who adds the pictures and then it's gotta be printed. So the book really comes out after a year. I don't know if um, a lot of you guys are book series readers. Do you read books in series? You'll notice a lot of the time, a uh, big, uh, big book series, like a new one will come out once a year because that's really how long it takes. But to go back to your question, it's a good question. Um, to write the first draft, it takes about three months. And I know a lot of other writers who say about the same thing and also uh, authors who write for not just for kids, but write for grown up books, that if you're serious and you're writing full time, uh, three months for a big, a big book. To unmute myself. Okay, I think we have, I'm gonna take one last question and then I have a question for you. Um, so Amy, do you have a question? Yes, um, do they use a book in the book? Like, do they have like a book to read something or something? Yes, in, in my book, in, in my book, there's a couple books. There's uh, Samantha gets from her uncles. I think I made up something called like the Encyclopedia Projectilicum or something. It's like an encyclopedia of things that you throw. So whenever anybody throws anything, she goes to this this book and looks it up. Whether it's like someone uh, in book three throws, tries to kill her by throwing a steel pancake at her, and so she has to look up steel pancakes in her uh, in her. Uh, in encyclopedia uh, mycelium i think it's called actually so there's that <laughs> and then there's another book that also comes up a lot it's called uh uh something like everything you should know about important works of art and read about because there's always clues in there and we find out uh i don't want to give too much away so yeah there's a couple books that that are very important including uh samantha who's writing a book a journal about all the places Ooh. she goes Nice. All right. So my last question for you is, is there a favorite children's book besides your own or series that either you like or has inspired you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a favorite book. I don't know if any of you have heard of or read the book Holes by Louis Sacker. I, that I think is my favorite book. I like the way it's written. I like that it's really kind of funny. But what I, the thing that I, I am really inspired by that book is it's a silly book. It's a, kind of a playful adventure with silly clues, but it's also kind of a really serious story with real problems that, that real people have. But the story is written in such a fun way that you don't even notice uh, how serious the story is as you're just sort of following mm. this one character. And so I think that's what I really like about Holes. I think, uh, I'm not saying that my books are that good, but <laughs> that's definitely what I'm trying to do by writing silly stories with a point uh, to them. And so that's, I think, one of my favorite. I really like Louis Sacker. I like his, a lot of his books. I don't know if uh, Wayside School Stories 
Uh, mm -hmm. So, Mr. Kins, that's books. actually interesting because if, um, since I've done some research on you, if you look up your books, then it's it will say if you like Samantha Spinner books, you might also like Holes. Like other other publishers or other reviews say that about you. So that's actually yeah, quite interesting. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all we have time for today, guys. I'm so happy that you guys all came. If you guys have um, some other questions for Mr. Gins, then your all your parents have my oh. email and they yep. can email me and I will send it on to him and we can maybe get some more answers. Sure. And if you go to samanthaspinner.com, there's a lot of extra puzzles and games and you can learn more about, you know, what went into making the book and, and clues and stuff. So I would encourage you guys all to check that out. And if you send me any questions there, I answer almost all questions that are submitted <laughs> uh, to that website. Um, okay. Well, can you guys all um, unmute right now and say thank you to Mr. Gins and goodbye? If you guys could try to all unmute yourself. Thank you. Bye. 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 We have to try something. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. So when I thank say you. don't be awful, you go. Have a waffle. Waffle. Okay. Wait, ready? Oh, oh okay. Ready? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Don't be awful. Be awful. Have a waffle. waffle. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All bye right. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Bye.